Hello everybody, welcome to another Power BI video. In today's video, I'm going to show you the steps that you need to take in order to have your consultant, friend, cousin, whoever you want, help you do things in Power BI service. There are quite a few steps that you need to take in order to make that work. So let me show you. Okay. In reality, I am doing these for my customers, but I am sure that other people need it. So let me make it public. How do you give access to external users into Power BI so they can actually help you as a developer? Okay. So step number one. Step number one means that you create a guest account on Azure Active Directory. And you have two ways to do it. You can do it either in Azure directly on the portal if you have access to it. You otherwise contact your administrator. Or you can do it from Power BI tenant admin portal. Okay. So either way will work, but you need to turn that on into the admin portal in Power BI in order to be able to do it from Power BI. I will show you when we get to the admin portal, which is right now. So to access the admin portal and Power BI service, you go to powerbi.com, you click dot dot dot, you go to settings, admin portal, and there, this is where you have the a bunch of things that you need to turn on in order to give them access. So the next step that we're going to take, step two, is if you added your users through Azure um, portal directly, so we're going to go here and search by Active Directory and turn this on. And this will give them access to the guest users that you already added, right? If you have the option if you want your your users to be able to add users to Power BI without having to go through the portal then you come in here and you turn this on it says invite external users to your organization so once you turn this on they will be able to invite external users and automatically a guest account will be created in Azure Active Directory so either way will work turn both on turn only one on i can imagine that big companies do not have this turn on because they want to control who the guest users are so it depends on your size or what your policies are you will turn this on or not so in azure active directory you need your guest user how you do it doesn't matter the next thing that you need to do is to turn this on allow azure active directory guests to edit and manage content right because you, if you're hiring a developer, they need to be able to create workspaces, to delete workspaces, to give access, to delete access, blah, blah, blah. So these need to be turned on. And I really recommend you to turn this also on, which is the ability to, when you are actually giving access to a developer to a workspace, that you can actually find the person. So they don't need to go to the email, copy the email, paste it in, so if you've already added that person as a guest user, make it searchable, right? So it's easier for the users to just add them to a workspace. This should be on by default, but okay, fine. And you might think like, oh, this is it. I'm done. Well, you're not done. You're not done. The next thing that you need to do is like, I cannot, as a consultant, I cannot go to parvia.com and, you know, it would be fantastic. You might need to get a list of the accounts of my customers' accounts and they say, oh, I want to log in here. And then I log in. No, no, no. What you need to do, if you go here, you go to help and support, you go to about Power BI, and this little link in here, you need to copy, paste it, email it <laughs> to your consultant, cousin, or friend. And that way, they need to save it somewhere so they can always access your tenant. So those are the steps that you need to take to have an external user help you manage Power BI. Okay, so I hope this helps you. Dear customer, this is what you need to do. Fingers crossed that everything works. And I will see you again on um, my next video. Take care. Bye bye.